Retirement accounts and 401ks will be getting a big boost to contribution limits in 2023. And this is important, especially with inflation as high as it is. We will be discussing three things pre-retirees should be aware of before maxing out their 401k and make sure to stay towards the end because we will be discussing why you should still contribute to your 401k even though the market is down in 2022. Stay tuned. Hey there, it's Alex and Matt from One Degree Advisors. If you're new here, we are certified financial planners that help folks with all things tax, retirement, and investment related. So Matt, a lot of people feel like they aren't saving enough for retirement. And the conventional advice, the conventional wisdom is to try and max out your 401k if you can. But we understand that it's not always a black and white decision for everyone. So step one, who is the type of person that might fit into the category of maxing out the 401k? Yeah, so at a very high level, like there's three people, right? Number one, those who have an adequate emergency fund, the adequate cash reserves. So when that emergency does happen, you don't have to dip into your 401k to take a withdrawal. Number two is those with little high interest debt. We're talking about high credit card debt, high student loan and car loan. You might want to consider tackling those first before you actually max out your 401k. And the third one here is you have to consider all investment vehicles. You have to go through and look, there's taxable brokerage accounts, there's Roth IRAs, you know, in some cases those might offer a little bit more flexibility in the assets you invest. So let's say someone does fit those categories, those three categories. Again, they have the emergency reserve, they don't have a lot of high interest debt, if any, and they've consider, considered other investment vehicles. So what is the second thing to consider when you're asking yourself that question again, should I be maxing out my 401k? Yeah, if you do fit in one of those three categories, it makes sense to take a deeper look at your employer benefits. And like we mentioned in the beginning, the IRS increased contribution limits for 401k plans up to 22,500 and 7,500 for those uh, 50 and over. So all, all in all, a total of $30,000. Mm-hmm. So the first thing we like to do when we're looking at this type of situation with clients is uh, looking through their benefits and seeing, okay, do you have a match? And generally that's about three to 6% of your annual gross pay. And really this is free money that you don't wanna leave on the table. So that $30,000 that 22,500 plus the 7,500 uh, is completely separate from the contributions that your employer can make. And it's just something that you want to take advantage of. Again, that's, that's a really good point because again, the, the contribution limits are going up next year, 22,500 plus an additional 7,500 if you're age 50 and up for a total of $30,000. That is completely separate from the employer contributions. And so you can get that plus, like you said, if your employer offers a match, that's just free money. That's just free contributions that can go into that account and grow for the future. So at the minimum, if you're able to do it, um, I think it makes sense to take advantage of the 401k and get that match. But the truth is, there are benefits beyond just investing for your future. You can potentially receive, depending on the type of contributions you make, you can potentially receive some tax benefits right now. Yeah, exactly. So when the, the last thing you want to do is make sure you understand your tax situation. So generally, when you're looking at a 401k, uh, many retirement accounts are contributing on a pre-tax basis. So you do get that nice little tax deduction in, in the year you contribute. But it, remember, this is pre-tax money. So you're making a deal with the IRS saying, OK, hey, this year I'm going to get a nice deduction. But once I'm retired, once I need to actually withdraw money from that, you're going to have to pay taxes on that. So really, you know, it's something where you want to take a look under the hood and someone in a higher tax bracket, you know, may want to contribute on that pre-tax basis still. Mm -hmm. But someone, maybe if you're making a little bit less money, it might make sense to, you know, make Roth contributions. So after, you know, you're paying that tax now and contributing. Absolutely. And that's something where even if, let's say you're young, um, it still may, may make sense to contribute to like a Roth 401k because you have time on your side. So the, the question I've been getting a lot over the course of this year is, should I still contribute to my 401k? The market's down. Every time I put money into my 401k, every pay period, every paycheck, I put the money in and it just looks like it's disappearing, <laughs> right? The market's going down. So why should people continue 
to contribute to their 401k, even though the market's down this year. And honestly, it may continue to go down a little bit more from here. Yeah, and, it, and it's natural to feel that way, especially when the market's down. Should I should I contribute to something that's losing value? You know, naturally you're like, okay, maybe I should hold off here. But you know, as long as you have that appropriate allocation, mm -hmm. you know, basically you might, you're buying stock at a discount in your 401k. And if you have a long time horizon to go, it might make a lot of sense. So we we actually made a video that's that's much greater detail on this exact question. So you can give that a watch right here. Absolutely. And now let us know what you think. Are you planning to max out your 401k this year and potentially next year? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.